So I'm going to attempt to make a bespoke end grain tabletop for my lagoon swivel table in the van because I think they look fantastic, but I'm not a professional. I haven't got a professional workshop. I don't have professional tools. I've got basic bog standard end of the line, bottom end of the line tools from screw fix and places like that. Uh, I have got a load of end uh, off cuts, some old, um, got some 12 mil, got some nine mil, got some five mil ply. So I'm gonna watch a few YouTube videos, cut it up and we'll see if we can get an end grain tabletop that is uh, fit for purpose and looks fantastic. If not, it's going in the bin, but let's see if we can do it. So this is an example of an end grain pattern. And this is done on a channel by a guy called Michael Arm. And he's got a professional workshop. He's a proper woodworker. And uh, there's a big whole community of people that like to create end grain patterns from, from plywood. So with my off cuts, we're gonna to attempt to do the same thing without a workshop and without the tools. So this is the actual um, nine mil ply cut into strips. This is it planed and sort of sanded. It could do with a bit more of the sand, but I filled all the little holes in with the wood glue and uh, you can see here there's a little bit of a patch, wood glue and sawdust. So it's all been sanded and then I've got some other bits here, which I'm also gonna make as part of the pattern. These need to be plain sanded, the holes need to be filled and stuff. But this is what it looks like in raw format. Um, so it's just a case of designing the actual pattern that I wanna make the table. So it really comes down to what materials I've got and how they will work out. Um, so I'm, the stage I'm at at the moment, I've cut the straight edge here, is gonna be cutting this into different thickness of strips so that I can then make a pattern out of this as well. This is the tabletop in progress. So I have used an electric planer just to try and get it as flat as possible, which it's not completely flat, as you can see from the profile. Um, filled in all the little digs and I've just sanded it. So this is going to be cut in strips this way so that I can make a little sort of pattern like that type of thing. But yeah, it is just living in mess at the moment because everything is being sanded and cut. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this will look lovely when it's done. But we'll see. We'll see how it gets done. bit of ply a little another little bit of scrap 69 centimeters by 45 deep 
put a couple of plates on there, put a laptop on there. It's big enough that you can have a cup of tea with your laptop, you know, whatever else. And you can fit two plates on it if two people were to sit and have dinner. You can swivel it around, obviously. Have it that way as well between the um, bench seat and the swivel seat. So I think this is a nice size. This is going to be the base and I'm going to lay out my patterns on this and then glue everything down and I'll decide after if I'm going to use epoxy as an epoxy resin to put a glaze over the top or if I'm just going to sand it and uh, seal it. We'll see. So here we are. I've laid out the rough design. It's pretty much how it's going to look. Um, this is all just sat in place okay not it's all just sat in place not glued what i'm going to do is i've put some clamps down here to sit against this edge so it keeps me pushing against it if you like and i'm going to glue as i go um where i've got little gaps i'll once i've glued i will cut the pieces to suit that any little fiddly bits so when i get to this bit here I've left this for me to um, basically cut to this last piece. This will be my last piece that I'm gonna cut to and that will be bespoke. So it should hopefully all fit tightly once I've um, glued everything. It should fit tightly because I can cut the last pieces to fit that last bit and then clamp it all together. So that's the plan. So the next stage now is taking it all apart and gluing it as I go. You can call me stupid Yes, you can call me sheep You can say I lay a You can say I weep You think that using her would get to me And if you're right then you're in trouble D Cause I won't break no honor So this is the morning after I've let the tabletop set. I had to clamp it down in certain places and move the clamps around just because it was starting to sort of bend, like curl up where the glue was sort of wet and making it bend up like a fish towel, if you know what I mean. So I had to sort of look where it was look where it was bending and then put clamps in certain areas and move them because I only got a certain amount of clamps until it was sort of tacky enough, strong enough to hold it where it was. Um, so, so this is the rough form. Now, when I first made these, the, this pattern, this was all clamped and then I planed it all as one piece. I then made these up with some offcuts. So these are slightly fatter from when I um, first ripped them on the bench saw that because they haven't been playing these sections, these bits of 12 mil ply, this bit looks a little bit, this bit was a bit that cracked as well and it's slightly raised there. So I'm gonna have to go over the whole thing. As you can see, that's bigger as well. I'm gonna have to go over the whole thing with a planer, I think. Um, and then I'm considering potentially doing an epoxy resin pour for the top. So the difference is in thingy bobs won't really make too much of a difference because I am gonna do, or might do an epoxy resin pour. The other thing is I'm gonna use my unused bits of um, edge trim that I painted to make the edges of the board. Um, again, every, this whole thing is just made using all the offcuts of wood that I've not used during the build that have been, you know, little bits left over, scrap and stuff. So, um, it, I, originally I did want this edge shown, but I think it's, it's, it's potentially a little bit untidy. You've got the five mil ply there, which is basically like the backing board for this because this is quite th these are quite thin, these ply strips. Um, and so I think just covering it up and not showing it is just gonna be a little bit neater. So that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, so the next stage is going to be planing this, sanding it, cutting the edging strips next, and then potentially doing the epoxy resin pour. But we'll see how it gets on in terms of getting a sort of flattish finish because I might just sand it and, and varnish it. So we will see, and we'll see 
oh, that's got to be repaired with some wood glue and some sawdust but yeah so I'm just going to take the clamps off and see I mean you can see these areas which I did last um, I just used the big pieces and then put a bit of 12mm ply in between to sort of separate the pattern and I think that looks really nice where at the beginning where I tried to get fancy and do skinnier bits because I thought it was going to look more intricate it's actually got obviously you've got more room for error you've got more gaps going on and it looks more untidier so we'll see how I manage to sort of get around this whether planging it off and filling some of the gaps with some sawdust actually makes it look a lot better so basically going to plane all of this to be a, one level if I can or as level as I can get it and I might I'm not happy with this bit so I might actually chop the table down below this level <clears throat> which is probably going to work out for the best because I measured it slightly bigger than I originally wanted it I measured it at 45 centimeters when I originally thought oh, I'll do it 40 um, so it will probably be about 40 centimeters once I've cut the tops and bottoms off and trimmed it all up to be completely square so it all happens for a reason so let's get on plane all this sand it and see where we get to hopefully it's not going to chip hopefully it's not going to chip everything out that I've worked on now the board in its raw state routed edges sanded again I sort of carried on that theme like I did on the chopping board which was to do a smaller bit of a router there and increase the depth along just to give it a little bit extra but I like the way that you can sort of see the end grain running in different patterns now now that the um, routed edge is sort of showing a different angle so it's all nice and smooth i finished it with a, a 240 grit if i had a 320 i would have gone over it again but i've only got 240 but that will do for now i'm going to finish it with an osmo top oil um originally i was going to do the um remember originally i said about doing an epoxy resin pour and that was mainly because the top is not completely flat and it isn't completely flat and I'll, I'll go into some reasons of why it's not flat later on um, but I really like the, the feel the tactile feel tactile feel of the wood itself and I want to keep that as much as possible so I'm going to finish it with the Osmo top oil and let that sort of soak in and both sides of that um, both sides of this tabletop um, just so that I can maintain the actual tactile feel and the soft feel and the finish of the actual wood itself rather than covering it with a resin. So I'm going to get on to applying the first coat of top oil. So this is where we are now with the raw wood. 
what it looks like let's see what it looks like when we start applying the top oil Here we are here's the finished product and i've got to say i'm really absolutely over the moon with it like obviously if everyone if anyone's watched the van build then you know how much love time effort blood sweat and tears i've put into this van and uh, this little tabletop is probably a snapshot of that time love effort and care that i've put into this van as a whole um this just like looking at this you can see the amount of intricate work that's gone into it and um and that's the same for this whole build so i'm really glad that i did spend the time to do this however you know how i originally thought that i could pull off making something like this with the tools that i've got i you know obviously we all watch these things on youtube and we think oh that looks good i'm going to try that but when you get down to the nitty gritty and you start making it um i think that's when you start you start to realize hang on a minute um, uh, I don't think my result is going to end up like this and it's just going to be a pile and more of a pile another pile of scrap so how did I end up with a result like this considering that I haven't really got a workshop I haven't got good tools I've got the basic tools that you can buy from places like Screwfix and B&Q and all of the home DIY sort of stores so how did I manage to get a result like this and what if I could do anything different so let's sort of go through it I've written a little list actually i've put this plate on here not because i'm eating but i just wanted to sort of show how much space you've got on here so this will easily give me enough room for two plates um i've got a cup of tea on here i don't want to spill it but you know if you want to swivel that to the person on the other side and you want to share the table and you both want to have a cup of tea and play cards or have dinner um yeah it's a very good size anyway let's get back on track I'll go through my little list so the first thing I've written down here is timber now for this build I used a 9 mil well a mixture of 9 mil and 12 mil ply which I had lying around and I cut it to a depth of about uh, 18 mil thick it was the minimum that my uh, bench saw would allow me to get to so I'm running the sheets through cutting off about an 18 mil thick strip wide now that that strip 18 mil gets turned on its top so that's then an 18 film 18 mil thick table um what would i do differently i wouldn't use a nine mil ply that is because when you cut it into strips the nine mil is just not got enough strength in it um, and it starts when you cut it into thin strips it starts to bend and bow when you're trying to clamp all that together it's an absolute nightmare what I found with a 12 mil was it kept its shape, it kept its structure, even when I cut it up into its 18 mil width sort of strips. So if anything, I would do 12 mil and above, you know, 12, 18, whatever mil, I would definitely use that. Using a, a, a nine mil ply, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really chance that again. It just was too much hard work when it comes to clamping. On the subject of clamps, I, I bought two large sash clamps, as you saw in, in the video. Um, ideally again if you're making a pattern 
So the, the Michael Arm video that I watched, he set his, his grain uh, at 45 degrees along and he set it over four sash clamps. And you really do need four sash clamps if you're gonna set that angle because you're staggering your ply to sort of go up like a set of stairs. So they're eventually gonna sort of like go in like an angle direction. With only two sash clamps, I didn't have enough to angle my ply at that. So I reduced the angle down to probably 15 or 20 mil. So instead of getting a 90 degree triangle top, like in, in my pattern, it's more of a 30 degree or 25 degree angle, which isn't a problem, but you're limited to how much of an angle you can get on your ply and how far you can do that out. So you will need, if you can get your hands on more than two sash clamps, you, you know, you can do it, but ideally use four. Let's have a little look. Again, I've mentioned about, so the thickness of the ply, when you slice your ply up, I slice mine at about 15 or 18 mil sort of thick, which when it's turned on its side, that's gonna be the thickness of my board. Um, and that, you know, I mean, it's, it's nice and lightweight, don't get me wrong, but um, you do sort of worry about the ability for it to maintain its stability as a flat piece. If it's thicker, it's got more strength in terms of you know holding that shape for longer um so i would say cut your strips between 20 to sort of 25 mil thick for a tabletop like this that's what i would do and that would probably negate the need for me to put a base on it because i could hopefully have got away with just using the end grain like this and have the end grain showing both sides so try and don't cut it too thinly cut thicker and don't forget, obviously, you're then going to also plane it down and sand it and all the rest of it. So you're going to lose some of that depth. So cut thicker than you probably would necessarily need. And just give yourself a little bit of extra play to plane down. Uh, the tools I used, I had a bench saw. Um, I had my track saw. I bought a planer, an electric planer. Um, and obviously, I've got my little palm sander. Out of those things, I would say if you can... What caused me problems was my bench saw wasn't big enough once I glued my slabs of wood together and I wanted to run it through the bench saw, you know, these are slats that I've individually glued and it started overhanging the bench and it was like bending and I was thinking, oh God, it's gonna snap the wood. So I had to leave the wood there mid flow, run round the other side as you saw and feed it from the other side and hold it and pull it through. If you can, set up some sort of little table or something, an extension for that bench saw so that when you run it through, it's got somewhere to go. That's that's one point. If we're talking about the bench saw, um, I just had my standard blade on that bench saw that I've had from day one when I bought it back in May for my birthday. And I've used it to cut up various bits of wood and chunks of wood. Um, if I was to do this project again which I, I, I might well do you know I might make a table or something else for like for indoors for in the home and I would definitely go and invest in a, a, a newer blade a, probably an 80 tooth blade one that's capable of doing cross cuts as well as fine cuts uh, and I think those blades are about 40 quid but I would invest in that and that is because what I found was as you again saw in the video um, you've got to imagine plywood is obviously already slats of wood glued and bonded on top of each other and compressed you're then cutting all that up and gluing it that way so instead of having i don't know say six pieces of wood glued like in a piece of nine mil pie say six pieces of wood glued together and you're cutting through that you're now cutting it through the other way and you've got all of them slats glued on top of each other so now you've got those six pieces of strips of wood glued i don't know 20 strips deep which is what 120 pieces of wood that you're sliding your through your blade i mean at times my blade was actually smoking like blue smoke where it was burning and you know there was quite a lot of burning going on um so again i would definitely invest in a better blade for the job i use a electric planer to sort of try and plane down my uh tabletop to get it as flat as i could and you know get the high spots down where i could when you run your hand over it you can feel very slight undulations it doesn't make your table it doesn't make your um, plate bend around and it doesn't make your cup bend around um so that's not too much of a problem for me but if i wanted to go for a completely professional flat finish ideally you want to run it through a fitness of planer and a friend of mine he has got a fitness of planer 
but I've just sold it for him on eBay. Um, so I didn't get a chance to use it, but if I was gonna do this again, you probably do wanna run it through a thickness of planer to get a lovely flat finish on both sides and make sure that it is even. Again, in terms of my sander, I had my little palm sander and then at the end I finished off with a block of wood with a, a, a 240 grit. If if I could have got my hands on one, I think a belt sander, a, you know, a handheld belt sander would have been a great way to sort of get a nice flat finish across the table. That would have been another little added bonus. But what do I think about the finished job? Well, looking back, I'm absolutely astounded and I am amazed at the quality of the finish of this and I am absolutely in love with it. Like, like I mentioned already, I've put so much work into this band build and this is just another little finishing touch which when I think you would if you were to come in this van and sit at this table and have something to eat or drink or play a game of cards you could see the amount of time and effort that had gone into this and you could appreciate it and I think every time I look at it every time I run my hands along it and I feel how smooth and lovely the wood is and you know it's got that Osmo oil finish and in the end I didn't have to use that edging strip to finish it I could allow myself you know to see the end grain in all its glory around the whole piece um i just absolutely love it and it's brilliant so can you the answer to the question is can you create a, a tabletop or a, a, an end grain piece like michael arm in his workshop with basic tools the answer is yes you you can um, there will be stages in the build when you you actually think i'm going to fling this in the bin because it's not turning out how his one looks and it won't but once you start planing and sanding and filling in the gaps with some wood filler and, and, and going along, um, it will slowly start to take shape. Of course, I think if Michael Arm was to come and take a look at this, he'd probably be horrified and think, oh God, uh, you know, that would never pass in my workshop. But for me, this is my imperfectly perfect uh, tabletop and I absolutely love it. Um, to the degree where probably friends and family are going to start getting uh, chopping boards and worktops <laughs> for Christmas and birthdays. But um, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon with it. So I, I would encourage you, don't, don't take my tips um, of how I work. You know, there is absolutely no health and safety in my work whatsoever. I'm just a bit of a doer and I go out and I get the job done to the best of my ability. So, um, you know, don't follow the ways that I use my tools, do it in the way that is instructed in the manuals and the way that you probably do it. So don't follow me that way. But in terms of actually getting a finished job, yeah, you can do it and you can do it with basic tools. And I think you'll be amazed at the finish. So all that's left for me to say is, if you haven't yet checked out the van build series and you're new to this channel and you're just seeing this for the first time, go way, way back. There's 18 or 19 episodes within uh, the van build series and you'll see this van when it was literally a works van it used to be like a water van for uh, like motorway stuff um, and, and you'll see the van from when I bought it from an auction and turned it into this amazing off-grid self-contained camper van so knock yourself out and go and have a little look at that series because uh, yeah it will hopefully inspire some more people to go and get on the van building uh, community and get on the adventure trail if you haven't yet checked out the Let Us Live website, go to www.letuslive.co.uk. It's a website which is completely inspired by motorcycles and adventure, and motorcycles and adventure are my two biggest passions. And if you're anything like me, they're yours too, so go to the website, and if you put Tony Reviews in the checkout, when you go to the checkout cart, you get a little 5% discount there as well. So all that's left for me to say is, until next time, safe riding, safe driving, happy adventures, I'll see you in the next one. I'm going to eat my Kit Kat. So, see you soon.